Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do a Q&A video. This is the first time I am doing this, so please bear with me and be kind. Um, I'm not sure if I will get through all the questions. Um, in my last video, I actually reached out and asked for you to send me any questions you might have um, for me to answer. And I also put out a post yesterday on Instagram and got quite a re few responses there as well. So I'm going to be looking down a bit and scrolling through on my iPad um, the questions. And so so I'm going to jump right in and get started, so hopefully I will make it through and this video won't be too long. So the first question is from Sparkly Pink Wisteria. Um, what do you do for a living? So I am actually in corporate communications. I'm a consultant currently, and um, I've been working in communications in one capacity or another for over 20 years. I've done marketing communications, PR, internal and employee communications, event communications, pretty much the full gamut. So um, yeah, I'm a communications professional. Uh, next question is from Nettie Ward. Hi, Nettie, my good friend Nettie. Um, she has a two-part question. If you could only pick five luxe items from your collection, what would they be and why? And the second part is any luxe items that you regret buying and why? So the five luxe items I would pick would be, number one, my Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 in the monogram print, since it was my first ever luxury handbag and one that I always dreamed about having and was so excited to finally uh, purchase. And so that would be the first. Uh, second would probably be my Chanel walk, um, kind of for the same reason. It's my first Chanel bag, even though it's not technically a bag, I use it as a bag. Um, and I just love it. It's just beautiful and so luxurious for me my lifestyle. Um, third would be probably my Louis Vuitton keep all since again it's another first for me and it is my only Louis Vuitton really travel piece and so I absolutely love that for travel um, and I also along with that really love my Neverfull in the GM size for travel. And then my last item would probably be uh, it's a toss-up between my Louis Vuitton leopard print um, Stephen Sprouse shawl or possibly um, Chanel number no. five, my favorite perfume, which I consider a luxury item and I have worn ever since my wedding day. And you can tell the things that I love the most and wouldn't want to part with are typically those that hold some kind of sentimental value for me. So um, those would be my five top luxe items. And then um, any luxe items you regret buying and why. Um, just a few, most of them I've actually returned. I had purchased a Louis Vuitton favorite in the PM size when that bag came out and I took it home and I realized it just didn't make my heart sing and I wasn't totally in love with it. I still love that bag when I see it on other people, but it just really wasn't for me. Um, and I also purchased a Louis Vuitton MM Agenda and I'm not sure if I regret buying it or if I regret um, bringing it back, but I took it home. I have the PM agenda. The MM felt a little bit heavy to carry around day to day, but now I'm kind of wishing I had kept it to use as more of a day-to-day -day kind of life planner, and I'm considering repurchasing and possibly even getting the GM size. So um, yeah, not too many things. I actually put a lot of thought into um, any of the luxury purchases I've made, so I've been pretty pleased with what I have so far, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, a question here from Becky L. Hi, Becky. She says, um, what is your favorite Italian dish to cook? And Becky and I have exchanged a few messages about the fact that we are both from Italian families and we grew up um, appreciating Italian food and we both like to cook. I would say my favorite Italian dish to cook is probably uh, pasta fagioli, which is a um, bean and pasta soup. And I absolutely love that soup. I love it in the fall, which is my favorite time of year. And I love that I make it anyway in one pot so it's pretty much me a Dutch oven and that soup and you know one part of the time and you're good to go not a lot of cleanup and um, something I can make pretty quick and easy and I absolutely love it so pasta fagioli would be my favorite thing okay here's one from Gia um, talking about Bobbi Brown products, uh, which Bobbi Brown product would you not want to be without and there are a few of those um, 
the first Bobbi Brown product I remember ever purchasing, besides lipstick, um, was the Bobbi Brown um, Stick Foundation, and I love that product, and I don't think I'd want to be without it. It's great for travel. Um, she's improved the formula over the years, but it's still just a really great product because you can kind of layer it on and create as much coverage as you kind of need, and it just looks really natural. Um, and I also really couldn't be without the Bobbi Brown hydrating eye cream, which is my favorite Bobbi Brown skincare product. So that is what um, I would choose for those. And um, I might have to go back to this because I am not getting the other questions up on my iPad right now. I don't know what is going on, but I'm gonna switch over to Instagram. I know there were a lot of questions there and they should be pretty easy to go through. Okay, um, this comes from Ella, Ella Eliza, Eliza, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, will you ever come to Milan so we can meet? And what kind of job do you do? Love, love all your videos. Thank you so much. And I love your Instagram posts. Um, I have only been to Milan once. I would love to go back. Um, I took a trip with my husband to Lake Como and Milan, and um, we missed out on going to Venice. So um, I will probably want to see Venice at some point. And if I do, I will definitely fly to Milan and probably spend some time there as well so if I do I will definitely let you know absolutely love Italy so I will definitely be back there at some point um, Eva in the city um, has two questions first do you prefer the Birkin or the Kelly and second what is your um, favorite film or TV show so the Birkin or the Kelly, I think I'm a Kelly girl. Um, I've never really even considered ever owning a um, Birkin or a Kelly because I just feel like I would want one new and m my husband would shoot me if I bought one. <laughs> Maybe for like a really big one day in the future, um, you know, big birthday or something, I don't know. But um, I definitely think I'm a Kelly girl. Um, and then in terms of your favorite film or TV show, there's so many. My favorite TV show is definitely Sex in the City. At any time the reruns are on, I'm pretty much watching that. And in terms of films, there are so many films that I love. Um, just the other night I was watching Love Actually for about the, I don't know, bazillionth time. And I love that film around the holidays. Um, but there's really too many to name. I think I've mentioned before that anytime the Shawshank Redemption is on, I will watch that. I love that movie. And uh, pretty much a lot of kind of chick flick type movies, just fun movies, Bridget Jones movies, love those. So there's too many to name pretty much. Um, Marissa Brown, how did your love for Louis Vuitton start and what was your first purchase from LV? So my love for Louis Vuitton all started with the Speedy 30 in the monogram print. Um, I can't remember even the first time I ever saw that bag, but I had owned probably 10 plus doctor style bags as I refer to them um, over the years and they were all sort of modeled after or inspired by the Louis Vuitton bag that was sort of my dream bag and um, that was my first um, LV purchase and I got it as a belated birthday present to myself for my 40th birthday finally so absolutely love that and that started the whole love affair with luxury goods and Louis Vuitton and all of that and um, okay next question Happy Mars, uh, Marcy, I'm not sure how you say that. What is on your LV wish list? Um, currently, I am looking at the Alma PM because I had a pre-loved Alma. I ended up selling it and decided I wanted a new one and was going to just get the same one in monogram. And after going to the store and buying a few other bags in the interim, um, now I'm kind of torn between the monogram, the Damier Ben, or um, most likely the um, Epi Leather in the color black with the silver hardware. I love, love, love that bag and I can't get it out of my mind. So that is definitely kind of next on my LV wish list. Um, Anne Demore, what is your ultimate designer piece you could not live without? Um, I would say my Chanel number no. five, even though it's not a designer piece so much as a fragrance, um, but it would probably again be my Speedy 30 in the monogram print. Uh, Jill Jenkins, I have a question. Are you lusting after the Retiro? And if not, why not? And also, could you see yourself with a Speedy 35? And if so, why? Um, I do like the Rutiro and I like it more and more. I actually have a friend who has one and seeing that bag in person, I just saw um, 
Lux Mommy do a video about hers and it, hers is absolutely beautiful as well. And she said exactly what my experience was, which is it is a bag you need to see in person because it really, the beauty of it does not come through on the website or even, you know, sometimes watching videos. She did a great job capturing some of the beauty of that bag, especially the leather on that bag. It really amps up um, the luxury of that bag and it's just a really beautiful size. It's a great bag and yes, I could definitely see myself with one. And um, would I could I see myself with a Speedy 35? Um, and if not, why? I don't think I would get the 35. I feel like um, the 30 is the size that I have in all my Speedies, and I think it's the perfect size handbag. There was a time when I was really going oversized with my handbags, and I would have gotten the 35, but. I'm kind of over that now. Um, I do suffer from some back pain and shoulder issues and I don't like to carry too much weight on my arms. So if I did a 35, it would definitely have to be like a shoulder um, with the shoulder strap, the bandolier. Um, and I'd probably use it more as a luggage piece or something to take with me when I travel. Um, but I don't see myself purchasing that bag. Um, Ruva A, which is your dream bag? Um, again, the Speedy 30 was always my dream bag, but my current dream bag is the Chanel Classic Flap in the black lambskin leather with the silver hardware and <laughs> the um, in the size medium. I actually have a vintage one in the size small, and it is a little bit small. That might be another regret actually on my list. Um, even though I do love it, I just don't find myself using it as much as I think I would if it were a medium size. So I'm kind of keeping my eye out for um, one in good condition or possibly at some point um, purchasing that one as a brand new dream bag. Jasper um, MS asks, um, if you could go on a date with a person of your choice, dead or alive, who would you choose? <laughs> I thought that was a funny question. Um, and I thought about, you know, dead or alive. That was an interesting part of the question. Um, I might choose John F. Kennedy Jr. <laughs> um, just because I just found him so attractive and um, such a huge, huge loss when he went so young as so many Kennedys have. Um, but uh, yeah, that's probably who I would pick. <laughs> um, I'm getting a little flustered now by that question. Um, Alicia Loves Glamour asks, uh, what, would you ever buy a Louis Vuitton trunk? My dream is to have one someday and love your videos, Laura. Thank you so much. Um, yes, I would absolutely die to have a Louis Vuitton trunk. Um, I'd probably have to win the lottery or just fall into a lot of money to purchase one, but um, I always am keeping my eyes out when I go to vintage shops and stuff, hoping to just find one in decent condition, but that hasn't happened, probably never will. Um, but yes, I would absolutely love one. I would use it as a coffee table and put everything on it and it would be my pride and joy. <laughs> um, Karen.c.h, um, how do you care for and store your bags? I actually store my bags just up on a shelf in my closet in their dust bags, stuffed, most of them, the larger ones anyway, and um, I don't really do much to care for them aside from kind of um, wiping them down with baby wipes, cleaning out um, the inside of my bags after I've used them. I don't really um, do a whole lot. So <laughs> I kind of, if, if something were, like I've had a few bags that were vintage bags that I've had to um, do a little more cleaning and things like that when I first got the bag. But aside from that, I keep baby wipes around for if I see any kind of, um, you know, little marks or things on the bag. But otherwise I pretty much am au natural with my bags. Nastasia M53. Hi, Nastasia. I'm so excited that you wrote me a question. <laughs> um, what did you? What made you start YouTube videos? And would you consider frequently doing outfit of the days? Um, what made me start was actually you and so many other YouTubers on here. I was um, just starting my Louis Vuitton frenzy. I had just purchased my first uh, Speedy 30 and I had come to find all of these, um, this kind of community of Lux, lo Lux lovers and handbag lovers and I loved watching the videos and um, I actually had first, I think the first person who subscribed to my channel or one of the first people was Trina Levers and I like almost had a heart attack. I was, it was like having a celebrity find me. Um, 
and um, I shortly thereafter um, had you subscribed to my channel and I almost died as well but I loved watching your videos they were just so informative and really really helped me build my um, Louis Vuitton collection and um, there's so many things that you just don't see when you go to the stores and um, I don't have a lot of stores in my area so it has been really helpful and um, would I consider doing outfit of the days? I probably would do them once in a while. I don't know um, how frequently. I'm really not that much of a stylish person. <laughs> um, I kind of, you know, I enjoy fashion, but I wouldn't say I have a lot of luxury fashion items or anything like that, but I do enjoy watching those videos, and um, I also don't have great lighting and camera equipment, but um, I will definitely put that on my list of future videos to add, so thank you so much for that. Um, little Flower Bud, LV Speedy B, Damier Ben print, size 25 or 30. Um, I would definitely go for the 25 in a bandolier because I love the way that bag looks as a crossbody. Um, so that would just be my recommendation. Um, Rachiella, I love the way she says her name. Hi, Rachel. Um, hi, Laura. Was great to see you doing a Q&A. Thank you. Um, what is your dream bag from Louis Vuitton if money is not an object? And my dream bag would probably be... Um, of all the bags I've seen, I had recently gone to a Louis Vuitton event and there was the twist um, bag in the quilted lambskin leather with the silver hardware. It was absolutely stunningly beautiful. Um, so I do have a thing with quilted lambskin bags, so that might be my Louis Vuitton dream bag. Aside from a luggage piece, um, possibly the Zephyr um, or the, what is that bag called? Oh my gosh, the other luggage that I can't think of the name of, the more traditional luggage. Um, I definitely would probably put that on my list as well, or a trunk. Uh, Susie Toons asks, um, love your videos, so hurrah for Q&A, thank you so much. Um, best holiday ever, favorite place for a city break, and where would you most likely visit that you haven't already been? So best holiday ever would definitely be my vacation for our 10 year anniversary. We went to London and with a little sort of side trip to Paris and um, I absolutely fell in love with London and it's probably my favorite um, place for a city break as well. And I'm assuming you mean going to a city and not taking a break from a city, but if I were taking a break from a city, I'd probably go to the beach, but otherwise um, definitely London. And where would you most likely visit that I haven't already been? Um, I am definitely planning a trip back to Paris, even though I was there, I was not there for a long time. So I want to spend more time in Paris with possibly a side trip to Amsterdam while I'm there and London while I'm there. Um, and then I would really love to go to Hawaii and I'd really love to go to Japan and I'd really love to go to Bora Bora. There are so many places I would really love to go. Um, I'd love to go to Spain, I'd love to go back to Italy and I'd love to go to Australia. So yeah, a lot on my list of things to do and I waited way too long in life to start traveling and anyone um, who's watching this, I highly recommend getting out and seeing more of the world. I think it is just one of those things that money, I mean money does buy it, but it's one of the things I think I've seen someone say, it's one of the thing, one of the only things that money can buy that actually makes you richer and I totally believe that. Um, Bishop Judy, do you have girlfriends outside of YouTube and Instagram that enjoy luxury goods? Um, actually not very many. I have one person who um, was a former co-worker of mine who had reached out to me on, um, I think it was on LinkedIn, and had mentioned that she had found my YouTube channel and she is actually a Louis Vuitton lover as well. And so we have since become friends and I have seen her Louis Vuitton collection and it's really exciting just to know someone we actually have the same sales associate at Louis Vuitton and we've hung out with her as well and um, so it's great knowing both of them they both are Louis Vuitton lovers and um, yeah aside from that um, my girlfriends enjoy I think um, fashion and that kind of thing but they're not as into luxury stuff as I am I think they think I'm a little crazy to spend my money the way I do but um, you know, everyone's got their thing, I guess. <laughs> um, behind the bags, I only have three questions left, by the way. Behind the bags asks, what luxury item is next to buy on your wish list? And I think I mentioned uh, the Louis Vuitton 
Alma PM is definitely up there. Um, I'm also looking to get a Burberry trench coat and um, a Hermes Click H bracelet in black with silver hardware. Um, so yeah, those are what's next on my wish list. Uh, Lady Susan Jane, um, what is your favorite thing to do and what makes you smile? My favorite thing to do depends on my mood. Um, I love to just, be, I'm a really crazy loner, so I love to just spend time by myself, reading a book, drinking a cup of tea, and um, just relaxing, taking a bath um, when I can, and sipping champagne, um, little things like that. I also really love the fall and be, love being outdoors in the fall weather, taking a walk in the woods, another thing I love to do uh, with my husband, um, and I love um, the thing that makes me smile is spending time with my husband and listening to him play the guitar. He is a guitarist and he plays a lot just around the house, acoustic, and I love to just kick back and chill out on YouTube while he's sort of jamming by himself at home. <laughs> so um, really enjoy that and that makes me smile. Um, Shamil Bookso, I'm um, not sure if I'm saying that right. Sorry if I'm not. Hi, Dolph. Hi. <laughs> Question, besides Chanel and LV, which luxury brand are you looking at or have on your radar or want to explore? So, so many. And I was just actually at Le Neiman Marcus yesterday looking at a few bags that I had never seen live up close and in person. Um, and I love, um, I would say I love Prada, I love Gucci, and I really um, most recently have been loving, oh my gosh, the Saint Laurent bag. Um, I can't think of the name of it, but the kind of square bag that I know Jen G on um, YouTube here has. Um, I can't think of the name of that bag. And Sam um, Snape H. BP has that bag as well. Just beautiful, beautiful handbags. Um, I also love Alexander McQueen. I love anything with a skull on it. I think those are really cool. Um, and sort of in the mid-range, not so much luxury. I mean, I guess they're still luxury, but um, I really, really enjoy um, Rebecca Minkoff bags and Tory Burch. And Tory Burch just came out with a whole bunch of softer leather bags that still have some structure to them. And I'm really liking those as well. And I think they're great quality um, for the money. So I will be checking those out this season. So I think that is it for my questions. I'm quickly going to go back onto my, see if my um, YouTube is working again. Okay, so I'm back and I just uh, pulled out my MacBook to see if I have any other questions here on YouTube since it seems like my wireless on my um, on my iPad doesn't seem to be working right right now, so not sure what's going on with that. But in any case, um, uh, I've just got one extra question here that I think I missed. If I missed any others, please let me know and um, in the comments below, and I'd be happy to answer your question. Um, I have one more from B Vibo, I think is how you say it, um, and she asks, or her, it's more of a comment. Um, she's interested in seeing the books on my shelf. So I will let you know what I have around me. So um, I actually have a whole bunch of books behind the camera that are just kind of fictional, um, mostly chick lit type books. Um, but I also just around here, um, while I'm working at my desk, I like to keep books that are just for inspiration. So I've got everything from beauty to luxury to um, home inspiration and things like that. So I will just pull over what I have here. So um, these, this stack here are all of my Bobby Brown books. Um, this is the first one I ever got years and years ago. This is so old. This is Bobby Brown Beauty. The jacket to this book is actually gone. And this was the book that sort of started my love affair with Bobby Brown. I also have Bobby Brown Beauty Evolution, which I love this, just um, beauties at all ages and of all types of beautiful people. So um, absolutely love that. Bobby Brown Makeup Manual, which is great with helpful tips for makeup in particular. Bobby Brown Living Beauty. <laughs> I Can you tell I love Bobby Brown just a little bit? Yes. And um, Bobby Brown Pretty Powerful. I really, really love this book. Um, kind of just shows, again, women of all ages and ethnic backgrounds and um, everyone it just kind of is a book about really um, bringing out your own individual beauty. So um, 
yeah, and then what else do I have here? I've got some Louis Vuitton books, and these are really heavy. I've got um, Louis Vuitton Art, Fashion, and Architecture, which it was my first um, Louis Vuitton coffee table book, and this is really heavy and gorgeous. Just got this earlier this year, and love that. And then I've also got the Louis Vuitton City Bags, um, A Natural History, and I really have enjoyed this book because it really gets into um, all of the Louis Vuitton um, classic bags. So there's like an entire section about the Speedy and an entire section about, um, ah, an entire section about the Alma and um, so many others, the Noé and many, many others. So love, love, love this book and um, has definitely inspired a lot of my Louis Vuitton purchases. <laughs> and then over on this side, we've got, um, these are some of my ah, miscellaneous feel good inspirational books. So for anyone who's familiar with the blog Cup Cupcakes and Cashmere by um, Emily Schumann, this these are her books. So there's Cupcakes and Cashmere at Home and then just the Cupcakes and Cashmere book. And these have all kinds of helpful tips and tricks for beauty and style and home and other things that I just really enjoy. Um, and then I've got Fleur de Force's book, um, The Glam Guide, which I actually purchased. I think this is the um, British version, but there actually is an American version coming out. And I know she had just done a book tour here and I've been watching all her blogs about that. I absolutely love her. She's one of my favorite blogger vloggers and um, so really have enjoyed this book. I have The Elements of Style. This has given me a lot of inspiration as I've been doing a lot of renovation work on my home and I hope to do a home renovation update video soon as well. And then last but not least my Chanel books which are right here. Um, so heavy. <laughs> Need to get to the gym. I've got a book about Coco Chanel that was given to me by a good friend of mine. Um, and so this is just a book about Coco Chanel's life. I've got um, this little trio of books here. This is just um, one of many Chanel. Um, I don't even know what this is called. I forget what this is called, but it's one of those um, just Chanel books that focuses on three different areas of Chanel fragrance, fashion, and I think the other one is handbags. I can't remember. <laughs> um, oh, it might be jewelry, actually, and jewelry. And so, yeah, absolutely love this book. And then Co Chanel Collections and Creations, which this book also is sort of divided into different sections by beauty. And um, I know there is a section on handbags somewhere. And um, yeah, just beautiful, beautiful imagery of Coco Chanel and of fashion and um, just really beautiful things that inspire me every day. And now I've got a huge stack in front of me that's building. So <laughs> thank you all for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Um, and if you have any other questions for me, please leave it in the comments below. And I will be definitely um, sure to do these videos um, regularly going forward. And I appreciate everyone for, for asking these questions and for caring to watch my channel. Um, I'm really still amazed at how many people will stop and pay attention to what I have to say. Um, but I really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend and um, I will see you soon. Bye.